there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. Tucked away in a leafy corner of Oxfordshire, there's a workshop where unloved and forgotten objects are given a new lease of life. Now, that looks brilliant. This is polished up beautifully. It looks good, doesn't it? Gary Wallace is a restoration and salvage dealer with a difference. What would you want for the whole thing? <laughs> in his hunt for the unexpected... Have we got those in the tent? Have you? No, no. <laughs> he travels far and wide to buy abandoned objects with hidden potential. Well, what's this thing? That's amazing. Two and a half, and you got to do it. All right. No problem. Then reinvents and transforms them into one-of-a-kind marvels. Helping him are his band of skilled designers and craftspeople who paint, cut, chisel and stitch to create masterpieces that are sought after by collectors the world over. I've got to get 12.50 for it. Thank you very much, Cody. All right. <laughs> yes? Yes. We turn the impossible into the doable, basically. <laughs> the ultimate recyclers. <laughs> Welcome to the Restoration Workshop. Right, yeah. I've got a bit of a problem in that I've got an American client flying in uh, for Friday to see these Napoleonic officers' trunks. Yeah. Don't be fully restored, but he'd be brought back to life. So it needs a bit of your spit and polish. Okie dokie. So that's your mission. Can you do it? I think so. Dealers and restorers like Gary and his dad have been recycling and repurposing old and redundant items long before it became the norm. It's already coming. Oh, yeah. If you can get that, all of it looking like that. Exactly. That's going to look the business. Yeah. Brilliant. I'll leave yeah. it to you then. OK, fine. All right. All right, Gary. Done it yet? Oh, good on me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And today, Gary's visiting a yard that's taken the art of salvaging to a whole new level. So we're off to Trinity Marine Salvage. They're world-renowned. They're the leaders in uh, maritime salvage. Anything that's worth salvaging from a vintage vessel, they grab it, basically. Always wanted to go. They've never been there. And uh, I'll be hoping to find something that uh, nobody else has uh, valued in the way that I would. Trinity Marine Salvage Yard has been reclaiming nautical items from all manner of boats, ships and submarines for over 30 years. Owner Mark has agreed to show Gary around to tempt him with some salty treasures. Morning. How you doing? Oh, nice, to, nice to meet you, Mark. Nice to meet you, Mark. Gary. Welcome to Trinity Marine. Well, I've heard all about it. I've never had the privilege of being over here. Oh, so. good man. Well, I'll wait till you see what we got. You know, we're the biggest and best in the world at, at marine gear. So I hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. come with me. I'll show you in the showrooms. Great. <laughs> oh, my world. This yeah. is absolutely bonkers. You like that? It's amazing. Good, eh? Yeah. I don't think I think I've ever seen so much really cool gear in one place at any one time. Yeah. I'm kind of blown away. <laughs> it's just bonkers. <laughs> Normally, you can walk into a room and you're kind of drawn to individual things. This place, you just don't know where to look first. It's just mind-blowing. Well, I don't know where to start. Well, I'll show you. Yeah, we'll start on the first aisle. Come down here, sir. OK. There's just so much of cool stuff here. It's amazing. I wonder what these are. They're diet plates, aren't they? <laughs> diet plates? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're light shades. Oh, that's... OK, all right. <laughs> yes, I like your version better than mine. This is the start of the lighting now, and in fact, this is one of my favourites that are coming. Wow. Well, aren't they something? So you pot you've taken those and polished them all up? Yeah, we've got them off the ship. For 20 years, we've been going straight to the shipbreakers and salvaging directly from the ships as they've been broken on the beach, you know. And as you, as you can imagine, where there's one of them on a ship, there's 100. So we'll buy the 100 and uh, get them cleaned up, polished, refurbished. Mark is very knowledgeable about his world. And um, for me as a dealer, Mark clearly knows exactly where these things have come from, their age, the provenance. And it's really helpful from my end for me to resell, given that knowledge. 
Here's just the start of the clock. So there's a, a little selection. Well, they're bloody interesting, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. What about this one? Yeah, well, that's that's an unusual one in, in the fact it's so big. It's, it's it's off an old ocean liner. What I like about it is it's fairly simple in its design, but it speaks of an era. It looks very 50s, 60s to me, and uh, it, I can I can visualise it in situ elsewhere. Like that? What sort of money do that be? We've got that on at about 250. Is that any good? I mean, I'd, I'd be happy at, at uh, probably a little, quite a bit less than that, probably sort of 1, 120, 130. That's getting close to what I give for it, to be honest. Like one, 160, that's, that's where I'm finished. Not 150? Oof, try. Yeah, go on then, 150. Let's start it. Let's get the ball rolling. Right, Cheers. Lovely. Good, appreciate, no really appreciate that. Good. It's a nice thing. I love that. Mark very kindly gave me a really great deal, so I'm very pleased with that. And it got the ball rolling, so uh, we're off to a great start. The sheer amount of potential new stock piled high on the shelves tempting Gary is overwhelming. But he's got to stay focused and find the hidden gems that he can transform for a profit. What's that? I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. I, I wish I did know. It's a little preserve like jar, that. isn't it? Yeah. How much are they? Tenors. It'd be a different price with a liner in it. I don't know what, no, I'm not quite sure what they're for, but they're Me so either. cool. I feel like I I've know, got to buy them. I know, there's something about them, I know. Whatever their previous purpose is, I mean, to me, on a table, they'd look great with a big heavy candle in them, and they've just got great design. There's they four of them up here. Yeah. Could, could there be 30 for the four? Yeah, 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 Indeed. yeah. Um, they're, not, they're not doing any good here. Especially up there. All right, well, I'll put those down with yeah. the other bits. No problem. But uh, they've just got a nice look about them. They're nicely made, aren't they? Do Italian they... made, Italian ocean liner. Normally, I walk into a place like this and um, I'm trying to be very strategic and buy specific things I'm looking for. On this occasion, I'm struggling to not buy lots of things. It's a massive challenge here today because there's so much amazing kit. Gary's not been able to resist some of the seafaring salvage that Mark's shown him, but none of it needs much work. He's come here to find items to transform, and it looks like things are about to get interesting. Well, here's the more fun side of the yard. Yeah, where the bigger gear is. And when he says big, he means really big. Well, this is something else, this thing. Yeah, that is. <laughs> so where do you reckon that's from? <laughs> well, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> that, though, funnily enough, that, uh, that is the, the, yeah, the stern letters of SS Norway, a really famous right. ship. And every now and again, if somebody questions the provenance on some of the lights and the fittings I got off the Norway, I'll bring them straight over here and say, look, I told you I got it off the Norway. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, 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 I've got the letters. The scale of this is just awesome. Yeah, you can't yeah. Fathom it, really. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I don't think I could use that. Slightly out of scale for most of the jobs I no, get involved with. <laughs> I don't think I've got a van big enough for that one. It's a fabulous thing. The, the uh, just the actual the way it's distressed and the uh, the, the overall look of it. It's uh, not that practical to hold in stock, I don't think. But uh, a wonderful thing to see, and uh, I, you know, keep it in mind. But I've got yeah. to ask. What are these? <laughs> well, they're 2,000 litre fuel tanks from uh, tornadoes. They're called drop tanks. People use them for all sorts, from river raft races to land speed records. After the Second World War, people were making motorcycle sidecars out of them and that, you know? Lovely bit of kit, and they're only 600 quid. Well, they're brilliant. We'll take a deposit, if you want to leave a deposit. <laughs> we about that. Gary is in his element, and the items he's being shown are like honey to a bear for his creative mind. Hey, I'll tell you what, I've got something down here I'll show you. Okay. This looks like it's, um, had better days. So that would have come off a Japanese cargo ship, oh, well. you know, out of the wheelhouse. Right. It should have a helmet on it. I probably don't have the helmet to go on it, so that would make it cheaper. This compass binnacle came from the wheelhouse of a Japanese super tanker, which sailed the high seas in the 1970s. The base holds the ship's magnetic compass, mounted on gimbals to keep it level while the ship pitched and rolled. I'm drawn to that straight away because the closer I got to it, it's just the right height to put your elbow on. Take a drink. How much would that be? I don't know. 200 quid, that. Can I be really cheeky and say one and a half? Um, let's just see what it 
guys. Aye. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, if it had a helmet on it, I'd be double that. But as it is, yeah, so one and a half. It's yours if you want it. All right. Yeah, I can't argue with that. That's All right. Great. Yeah, no brilliant. problem. Thank you very much. No problem. Yeah. Great deal. It's one of those things that falls into the realms of not so desirable in Mark's world, but more desirable in mine. It's just an amazing thing and a, a, and a fantastic price. A successful deal. And Gary's on a roll, his imagination set alight by the history and workmanship in this amazing yard. So I walk into the shipping container and it's like a cave. You just have to keep going deeper and deeper and deeper into the cave. And sure enough, at the back, I spot um, the major parts of what appears to be some kind of a display cabinet. So what do you think that is? That is a base off an old ship's model. You know, we sold the model in the end without the base and right. kept that for a rainy day. It would have been all glazed and a big bit of kit once. There's a base with four legs, one or two little cornice pieces. Um, in my mind, I'm already visualising how it's going to go together. Right, so, uh, oh, what could it be? Uh, well, I mean, it's been there a few years already, and another few years ain't going to do it any good. So, to be honest, I'm quite happy to sell that cheap. A £50 note would buy all that. Well, I'll tell you what, I can't argue with that. No, I don't no, even no. know if it's all there, but I kind of have a vision that what it could be, so, um, right. yeah, let's go for that. Uh, OK, yeah. fair enough. You're good at this, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what, Mark, I think I've touched the tip of the iceberg yeah. here. I've had an amazing day, and uh, I'm still buzzing from just walking around here. Oh, thanks for that. That means a lot. Cheers, Gary. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much. With a final deal secured and his imagination firing, Gary loads up his bounty and heads back to the workshop. Well, today, I have to say, you only got to look at this. What a fantastic day. I, I don't want to leave, actually. <laughs> There's so much stuff here, and... It's, it's, it really is a, an amazing stomping ground for someone like myself. I've got loads of inspiration from some of the stuff I've seen here, so I'll definitely be back. Hey, Gary. Hey, Rick. How are you doing? Good trip? Yeah, very good. At the workshop, Gary wants to get cracking on a potentially challenging creation. I'm about to embark on the ship's display cabinet, which uh, I discovered tucked away in pieces in the back of the container at Trinity Marine. The cabinet would originally have been crafted to house a maritime model of the highest order before it fell to rack and ruin. Gary's challenge is to bring it back to its former glory. I'm quite excited about this project, and to have bought this piece for £50 literally is a jigsaw of pieces, and to save it and resurrect it, that's the aim. It's going to be a lot of work, it's going to be a lot of expertise and a lot of elbow grease, as ever, but I've got a gut feeling this could really be a, a major transformation. Originally, the cabinet was designed to be viewed from all sides, but once laid out, it's suddenly clear that some of the upper elements are missing. Mm. So, Gary needs to get creative. I want to adapt this and turn it into a wine presentation cabinet. This is how I visualise it going back together. We've got the leg structure, which is actually very, very strong, but the fact that we have one or two pieces missing will dictate where we go next. If I make this a wall cabinet rather than a freestanding cabinet, it will allow me to utilise some of the elements that are already featured in the structure and bring them to the forefront. So from the front, everything will look complete. So next stage is see if we can uh, get it put together. Underneath the peeling layers of paint, this maritime cabinet may have hidden depths. What I'd like to do first is just do a tester. Yeah, as suspected, yeah, that's really nice ebonized timber under there. And this will look incredibly showy. And just by rubbing away there, you can see how that's going to come up. Um, waxed and polished, that will look absolutely superb. And I like where you've got the mahogany just coming through. That gives it an amazing character, and it will look very, very rich. It will make a real statement. And if it's going to be to showcase uh, a wine collection, it will be absolutely superb for this purpose. It's really nice when you uh, suspect how something 
what is underneath and you uncover it and there it is. It was going to look superb, this piece. Stripping a piece this size without damaging the ebonised wood underneath it is a skilled job. So Gary brings in sister Karina, who spent years learning to do exactly that. The job satisfies me. I enjoy doing all this sort of stuff. Once you get into all the little nooks and crannies, uh, it's like you can really see what it's beginning to look like. When it's got to have like different colours coming through, like the black and the mahogany, it's just going to look really good once it's all sorted, completely stripped. Every stripper's dream. Very satisfying. <laughs> Great. Love it. With the old paint removed and the mahogany revealed beneath, it's on to the next stage. Going to start now on the uh, reconstruction of this piece. I'm going to reinforce some of the joints here. We start from the base up. When it's completed, the cabinet needs to be able to hold over 200 bottles of the finest wine. With all that weight to bear, it's essential the structure is rock solid. So we open up the joint so it allows us to get some more adhesive in there and then we close it back up. But the joints are really nice and crisp and accurate, so it's a case of just getting some glue to go into the old joint. And on a, on a piece like this, the quality is so good that the joints really are, are a testament to its structure. Glue takes about a few hours to go off, but we'll leave it as long as possible. In an ideal situation, you leave it overnight and it'll be rock solid. Leaving the glue to dry, Gary moves on to his next project, reinventing a Japanese compass that he bought for £150. Once the main navigational instrument of a 1970s super tanker, its new destiny is to become a posing table in a bar. Looking at it, there's lots of things to consider here. I don't want to polish it beyond uh, recognition. I want to keep as much patina and character about it as I possibly can. These balancing chambers here and the main body of it are all powder coated. But that is a process where layers of paint are baked onto it. It's very difficult to get off. And I actually quite like the idea of some metal coming through and the original paint being on there. Now, I'm going to do a test. In my experience, you can polish that with a slight abrasive wheel in the same way you polish metal. And it does come up with a really nice sheen. What I'm going to do first is take these off and um, go and see if we can try it on the buffing wheel. Right, so straight away I can see where the metal's come through. That's going to highlight that really nicely. And that's what we're going to end up with, and I'm going to be really happy with that finish. Using the same process, Gary polishes each of the bolts and fittings to bring them back to life. And well, now you have a fabulous uh, glistening nut. I can just imagine it done. It's going to look amazing. So I want to do the same to the, to the stem of the compass and at the same time polish and highlight the areas on the bowl of the compass. And buffing isn't the only thing with the potential to make this old compass shine again. Amazing thing. And the beauty of this piece uh, and an added feature is that there is a light fitting just below here and that forces light to come up through the compass. It's glass on the bottom and that sends a ray of light that comes out through the top and that helps you pick out the directions on, uh, on the compass. It's just getting better and better, this piece. Getting into the guts of the compass base to restore the light fixture isn't going to be easy. Luckily, Gary has just the man for the job, electrical expert Eric. What need to pick your brains here. There's a, a light fitment there. Mm. And I'd like to get that going because the, once the tabletop's on there, it can give a warm glow and it'll be a real talking It'll be point. really nice. Well, I can see there's wires coming out of the bottom. So it might be pretty straightforward just to change the change the light fitting. Yeah. OK, that should be fine. It's not every day a project like this comes into the workshop. Anything to do with the sea, with marine, really gets my juices going. And uh, to be asked to get cracking and work on something like this, I find tremendously exciting. Even if it's a relatively uh, simple exercise, I just know that the whole end result is going to look stunning. So I'm going to... First of all, investigate by unscrewing the screws. I can see two. 
<laughs> okay, so the next thing we need to find out is, having undone these four bolts, is it going to let me... Okay. <laughs> I've got the four bolts undone. And this thing should lift out through here, but it doesn't want to let me. Oh, it's going to be more difficult than I thought. Uh, no handbook on how to take it apart and put this together again. So I just have to guess. Oh, come on, you bloody thing. I think it's the wooden blocks. It is, it's the wooden blocks that are stopping this thing coming out. I'm sure there's a lot of rules and regulations and anti-tampering issues to do with this, but at the end of the day, it's going to be a bit of brute force and English ignorance that's going to solve this little part of the conundrum. Oh, come on. Oh, right. Finally. <laughs> Success at last, and now he's got into the light fitting, he sprays it with a matte black finish and starts rewiring it. The original wiring, it was really ropey looking stuff, I have to say, so it had to be taken out. The light fitting is rewired with fresh cabling. The lighting's going to be at the heart of this item, and it's going to be obscured and hidden. So you won't see the source of the light at all. You'll see the effect of the light, and the effect of the light will be in the compass itself. It's quite exciting. The frame is absolutely sound. At the workshop, the glue's dried on the mahogany base, ready for the next step to turn it into a wine display cabinet. What we have here is the, the plinth to which the case sits above. And if we look at the joints on these, the wood's been routed out there on the groove, and then these biscuits have been made, and they slot between the two grooves. It's a very good old-fashioned method of doing corner joints. So it's important at this stage, because these pieces have been... They're not mass-produced, they are one-offs, and they were made to bespoke to order, that each of these pieces will sit perfectly into each other. We've just got to make sure we get the, the correct joints lined up with uh, each end. Perfect. Moving on to the next stage, it's then a case of building the frame. We've got one of these missing. The section here will not be seen because we're going to put a, a back on this. So that means I can take this section away from the back here and then cut this and recreate this section to go that end. So it means I can copy this piece and that gives me the sides and front will look absolutely original, which is exactly what we need. Sometimes you have to adapt to complete a project. And in this case, I don't mind doing that. We're just making the best of what we have. For the frame to fit back together securely, Gary has to create an exact copy of the existing joint. So I'm literally going to mark off where the other joint is and replicate that. This is how they would have done it in the old days, so... And then the other side is a slightly different joint. I'm going to cut that there. So I've got four cuts to do, and we can do that all by hand. You build a knowledge of the way things uh, are put together over years and years of actually re reconstructing items just like this. And um, I find this part of the job really satisfying because you literally are saving something by rebuilding it. Perfect. There's three other stages to this joint, so I just need to look at that now and compare it to the other one. It's a nice way to 
appreciate the workmanship that's gone into this. The experience you gain from these past craftsmen and the way they've worked can actually uh, inspire you and give you ideas of how to do stuff yourself. Lots of these processes have been lost with uh, mechanisation and uh, mass industry. There you go. Happy with that. So now I have uh, one for each side, and uh, this allows me to proceed with the next stage. And just offer this section up to make sure it fits OK. That's uh, looking really good. Yeah, it's a nice tight joint and it's really coming together. Ah. Now the frame has come together, Gary's got his hands on a mammoth wine rack to go inside it. It needs to be six foot by three foot. This is eight feet, so we've definitely got the length. So, what's the height? Exactly three foot. Perfect. Just need to chop this down, and that's going to fit. Right, it's going to be tight, but it's going to fit, I hope. That is absolutely spot on. And seeing that rack on mass inside the cabinet is giving a, a clear indication of how um, awesome this piece is going to look. Yeah, it's really shaping up. With one project nearing completion, Gary steers his creative urges back to the compass table. He wants to fit a heavy glass top to it, which will need a sturdy base to keep it balanced. Just discovered in my archive of timber a fabulous piece of teak, and um, it's going to be perfect for the base for our compass. Um, the considerations I need to think of are if someone was leaning on it, what would counteract that balancing over? So if this is bolted to this very heavy, dense piece of teak, then I have to visually calculate how that will, what will it take to tip that over? So by my calculation, if this was 600 deep and 800 in length, that should work perfectly. Wood cut to size, Gary uses his trusty router to round the edges. Just be a finishing touch, so hopefully the whole lot will look as though they've always been together. Yeah, lovely. Over the years, I've done an awful lot of tables in various different ways. But I have to say, I'm getting pretty excited about this. Marrying these items together, it's just going to look awesome. The compass is almost ready to be assembled into its new base. But first, Eric needs to cut into the wood to accommodate the new wiring. The compass will face forward. Uh, I want the cable to run away out of the back of the fitting. So there's a nice, smooth groove there. Cable will run inside there. I think while I'm here, I'll just smooth this all off and probably look at a bit of waxing on this.
soaked. So I'm going to leave that now to see how much gets soaked in and take this inside because I want to start the process of getting this all fitted together. Yeah. It's going back together nicely. With the compass reassembled, he can attach the base. So what I've got to do is get this fitted to its the first bolt, but the trick is not quite as easy as it all seems because I've got to feed the cable through the hole before I can offer this up to the base. Right. How about that? Now that's a good looking thing. That is lovely. Really pleased with that. There's now just one crucial test to carry out before a top can be added. I'm really looking forward to seeing this all lit up. This is what's going to bring it to life. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing it work. This is the moment of truth. Never seen it lit. Uh, this is an absolute first. That's amazing. And it's really beautiful. So I can imagine navigating at night time, you're in darkness on the high seas, this soft glow of light. And the look on the compass is just beautiful. I can't wait to show Gary this because it's just, it's, it's, it's so intense. It's almost, it's not what I expected at all. But before Gary gets to see the compass light in all its glory, there's a final piece to add. What remains is for the top to go on it, and that's, I'm going to use one of these panels. Now, they are really thick, really heavy, and nice and dense, and the plan is that they will sit on some rubber grommets onto the um, blocks either side of the compass itself. And now that we've made a base that actually will balance the whole thing out, this is going to work perfectly. Fittingly, this glass panel was salvaged from an ocean liner. It has a heating element attached, designed to stop it misting up. These are normally siliconed on. We've just got to try and splice it off using this uh, scraper. There you go. That's uh, come up quite easily. The dirt's going to come off really easily and um, reveal a very nice, clean surface. To help the edge of the glass blend in, it's sprayed silver and then fitted onto its new base. Oh, God, I'll tell you what. <sighs> Check that out. How about that? Now, that looks Absolutely good business. Absolutely stunning. And Proof in the pudding, that is absolutely yes. stable. And bang, it's, it's uh, I just... love it. It's actually uh, surpassed my expectations. There's only one thing missing. Drink. Yes. <laughs> Are you opening the bar? <laughs> From an old ship's compass that had lost its way, bought for £150, to a showpiece table that he's hoping will fetch £1,600. I, and... I had to be honest, I, I, I think it's a piece of genius, Gary. Beauty, but it's a thing of beauty. I love it. It's just got to go in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Never in a million years did I expect it to look so good. I, it's uh, one of my favourite things to date. Outside the workshop, Gary's continuing the transformation of the dilapidated display case. Next step is to cut a backing board that will rest against the wall. So I'm using a recycled composite board. It's got strength, but it's relatively lightweight. And for the purposes of this exercise, it's the perfect board. We're going to paint the back, and then the, the other side will be uh, covered with, with mirror plate. So we want to keep the weight down as much as possible, because there's, there's enough weight in there already. 
With the board precisely cut, Gary needs to add the mirror that will bounce back the bottle's reflections to give the illusion of depth. Trying to work with a great big sheet of mirror plate for this project would be quite difficult, so it's much more practical to use two halves. A little bit of movement there just to allow us to get the right gap on either side. Well, we've now got the mirror plate onto the backing board. Now, the tricky part of this exercise is to get the mirror on the board over to the piece and then upright. And not until that's in place will I be uh, uh, sort of at ease with the mirror situation. So what I propose to do is slide it across onto the edge here with my trusty assistant. Yeah, it's all right. Well, the mirror's in place, and uh, so far, so good. Um, next stage, we've got to get the rack in. Well, she's taking shape now. <laughs> Where are you going with this? <laughs> Bit of weight there. <laughs> and there's no wine in it yet. It's, it's shaping up to be quite... Um, a, an outstanding piece, I think. It's going to look amazing. Now, I need to get some polish on this piece. I want to bring out this uh, beautiful mahogany timber. This wax has got quite a rich stain in it, and I just want to use that to draw out the, uh, the wonderful tones of the mahogany. By using wire wool, I'm, I'm forcing the wax into the grain, and where we've got tones and slight traces of the old ebonized finish in there as well. Using the wax, you're actually drawing that all together, and it's going actually going to look very, very natural. That's literally without anything other than uh, the wax and a bit of elbow grease. And already I can see how how well the, the rich colors of the, the timber are reacting with the rack itself. It's almost like a black and tan combination, which is uh, really quite trendy at the moment. When you consider it was a bundle of painted pieces in the back of a container, uh, it's quite a transformation, and uh, I'm really pleased with it. I think it's going to look amazing. The cabinet is assembled and polished, and Eric's added one final flourish. <sighs> How about that? Yeah. Brilliant. No, it's really, it's, uh, it's, it's just it's, does something. That, it's that final thing, isn't it's it? It's almost unexpected uh, because you, you you get this soft wash at the front, then you kind of lose the light, and then it reappears in a rim in the mirror at the back. Yeah, you can see how it filters into through the rack. Yeah. So full up, that's going to look absolutely amazing. It's a triumph for Gary. He saved a grand piece of furniture, forgotten in pieces and destined to rot, and transformed it into a display piece that can once again be enjoyed, used and admired. Now up for sale for £2,000. It's one of those uh, transformations I'm really, really, really quite proud of. <laughs> well, I think we ought to celebrate. Never one to resist a good celebration. I'm going to give you half a glass because you've got lots to do today. So Congratulations on spotting cheers. this. Well done. It's been a hugely satisfying week for Gary. His trip to the marine salvage yard launched two of his most successful transformations, and he's hoping to round it off with a sale. His friend and local landlord, Fluxy, and two Fluxy juniors are visiting, looking for potential new fixtures for his pub. Gary, hi. Gary. <laughs> nice to see you again, mate. Oh, mate, you bought you the right, whole mate? team. Yeah, I got a boy side, mate. <laughs> How you been, anyway? Yeah, really right. good, not too yeah. bad. Yeah, yeah, been really busy at the pub. Yeah, just need some more bits now, mate. Right, well, let's go and have a look. Excellent. <laughs> Go on in, boys. Who's, in, who's carrying the money? <laughs> not me. <laughs> <laughs>
Wow, Gary. Look at all this. Yeah. Dear me, excellent. Well, I'm certain to be able to find some stuff here. <laughs> no, you can't play on that one yet, boys. <laughs> oh, this is wow. Yeah, there's... Um, I'm not quite sure what you're looking for, but you, you might want a few strategic pieces. Or, yes, or, um, yeah, yeah. You know. well, I mean, this is all my sort of stuff, Gary. It's all the quirkiness, it's all the one-off stuff. There's some great stuff over here, Yeah, I can see some of those. And, uh, about this chap. Yeah. Wow. So what actually is it? What, what is it's it? It's a ship's compass. It is a compass. Oh, yeah. Okay. Wow. Well, we actually illuminated it on the inside there, but it's just a great feature. A big wow factor. Big, big wow factor. Well, I mean, yeah, and yeah. a real talking point. The thing about this is, it's not what it really cost originally. It's the amount of work that went I into understand. it. Understand. The best I could do on this would be sixteen hundred. I can see the work that's gone into this. More to the point, it's uniqueness for me. And how it will fit in to to you know to my pub, and uh, yeah, no, happy. Great. Great. Okay. Great stuff. In relation to what I'm thinking about and what I want, and what I think is right for my pub, he certainly hit the nail on the head. You know, it's exactly the sort of bits I'm after. I can only imagine the amount of hours and work that Gary's put into converting that. And I know it was scrap originally to a degree, and you know, he's got it up to a working compass under this glass table. And as well as being an object of, of fascination and, and uniqueness for people to come and see, it's also a functional table as well. It has to be in the pub, you know, people, people will sit around it, it's going to be a talking point. And uh, yeah, and it's something great, it's something you certainly won't see anywhere else. <laughs> A drink with you over this table is, is yeah. it's like it's made my day. I'm yeah. really glad you're pleased with the kit. It looks great and um it's gone to a great home. Really happy. Let's do what we do best then, shall we? Cheers. Cheers, mate. Yeah, a long time no see. Next time on Restoration Workshop. The reinvention of a topless table leads to some unconventional moves. We're doing the zinc dance. So we're going to cover it in flying jackets. Gary's passion for recycling takes on new heights. Pockets actually work. Whatever you want to put in there. <laughs> and at a motoring auction, he's got the pedal to the metal. It's 200 over. 